Now we're going to go ahead and put an eye splice into our double, bla double braided line. You can use this if you want to make a dock line, which is what I'm doing, to possibly put around a pylon or some other object. So that's what we'll be using it for today. The tools we're going to use are, we'll need some electrical tape, the appropriate fids for whatever line you're using, and you just select whichever type of line you're using. A marker to mark the line, a pair of scissors, a sailor's palm, some wax thread, we got a lighter needle, and pliers because I know with this one it's going to be kind of dense and thick so I'll need pliers to pull the needle back and forth. And most of this is going to be used for whipping the line at the end, which we've already seen. So we'll go ahead and put most of that to the side, clean up our space, and I'll put my tools over on the edge so they don't roll around on me. There are multiple ways to put an eye splice into a double braided line. Uh, this is one of the easiest ways that I've found to do that. Uh, so to start off with, we will prepare our line to do this. So if you heat at the end of it, or if there is something on the end there that's going to stop the core from moving out of the cover, you need to go ahead and take care of that. So we're going to go ahead and use our scissors to cut the very tip of this line off. That way the core and the cover will slide as easy as they can. So we get that, put that off to the side. Now the next step is to figure out how big of an eye splice we actually want. I'm going to make these rather large because I'm using them to go around cleats and other things when we dock. So we'll do about that. And then for the tail here, you want one fid length. And again, it depends on whichever fid you're using for your line. Since you are using fid lengths, these are not exactly scientific measurements. So if you mess it up by you know an inch or something, don't worry about it. Just keep moving on. All right, so we got our fid length. We're gonna make a series of marks on this. So I'm using a black marker. Use whatever would contrast with the line that you're using. On the first side, on your bitter end here, next to the fid, we're gonna go ahead and mark one line. This is our one mark, and then directly across from that, we're gonna mark two. So I'll put two lines. This is just easier than trying to write A or B or the numbers one and two. We're only gonna be making four lines on this rope, so it should be fairly easy to keep control of. Now that we have our marks, we got our bitter end here, we are going to go ahead and pull the core out from the cover at point two. So to do that, you can either try to use the fit appropriate for your line, which may work uh, when you order the Samson uh, box of fits. You will also get a pusher that you can try to use also, but I've just found that a smaller diameter fit seems to work well for me. So for the double braided line, you'll just pull sections of the cover out and you're wanting to expose the inner core. Once you can see the core, you're going to go ahead and start digging that core out. And you just want to make a loop. Try to get underneath of the core as much as possible because if you just jab your fit or whatever you're using into the core and just start pulling, you'll just start stripping all the threads out and it'll just be a, a, a rat's nest of line. So keep opening it up until you can get underneath of it and then just pull. Alright, so now you can see I have the entire core out of the cover. So since this is my number two spot, I'm going to go ahead and put a, two lines here on the core just to mark that. That way I know where I pulled that from. Put my fit away, and now I'm going to pull it out. You want to pull it out of mark number two, pull the bitter in. So you're going to pull the core all the way out. Alright, now you got your core. We're going to take some tape and tape this stuff up. You just want to tape up the end so it doesn't pull apart. And if you can tape it tight and get it a little bit tapered, that will help you out later on. So use your electrical tape and get it nice and tight around there. All right, now we can set that away. 
Now we got the cover. We're going to do the same thing with the cover. Use electrical tape to tighten that up and make sure that it does not fray yet. Alright, so now we got our cover and our core set up. We have Mark II here. We're going to go ahead and pull out a bunch of the core and use our FID for a measuring device. And what FID length we're going to go ahead and mark. This is going to be Mark III. So we have one, two, three. Make another mark. This is going to be a three quarter fit length. So most of your fits will have lines here, or quarter and three quarters of the fit length. Line that up with three, mark four lines at the tip. One, two, three, four. Put our marker away. We are done making marks with this. Now we're going to take our cover, insert it in the back of the fit, and there are different types of fits, so uh, attach the line to your fit, however that works out for you. And then we're going to take some electrical tape, we're going to wrap it around here. Be sure to tape this because as you're pulling the lines through themselves, uh, they can come out and then you just have to redo everything and it's kind of a hassle. So make sure you get it nice and tight around the fit. The first one is rather easy. We're going to go into point three, where I have my three marks. The easy way to do this is to press the core together and it opens up on you. Uh, just go in anywhere near there. It doesn't have to be a specific braid or anything. And then just push it all on the fit. Come out at mark four. So there we are. And you can kind of leave this bunched up. doesn't really do anything right now. Bunch it up, pull it through, and then remove your fit. Now we're going to untape our cover. Now there are a couple ways to taper your cover like this. Uh, you can actually count and cut every second braid going up and that'll give you a nice smooth taper, uh, but you don't really need that. So what I'm going to do just to make life easier on me this is spread it open a little bit, and then I'm just going to cut a taper in the line. So that way it's nice and tapered. Push all this away, and you'll have some frays here. Just pull those off. Get all that out of the way. And now we're going to push this back into the core. You don't want to slide it all the way up. You just want it at the edge. So right about there. So when it's the core is stretched out over the cover, it's pretty close to the edge. Maybe just a tad more there. All right, now I have that. Now I'm going to take a piece of tape, make sure I tape the cover, and then wrap it around the whole thing so the core and the cover do not slip on each other. Because when you're sliding this together and splicing it, that might come out on you. All right, so now that that's kind of secure, I'm going to go ahead, finish this off, put the tip into here. Again, it's going to taper down. The cover is inside of the core for this section of rope. So. Nice. Now we have that. Now that section is pretty much done. Now we're going to work on putting the core back in the cover. Okay, so again, we're going to attach this to our fit. Use a nice section of tape because we don't want this to come undone. This is going to be the tighter section. use too much though because you don't want it to bundle up on you. So if it bunches up and gets bigger than the rope, now you just got more of a hassle than you had before. So make sure that's tight on your fit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in to the cover close to where the core and the cover meet. So again, there's no specific set of braid that you have to hit, uh, but you want to get as close as you can to this 
without being very tight on it because you don't there's no reason to have an extra friction point here so just come you know two or three threads up you're going to spread the cover open so you can get your big fit in there got that opened up a little bit and we'll get started with our big fit all right now one of the things i like to do is pull more cover out or pull more core out i'm sorry because this allows you to straighten out your cover so that, that way you just got a straight run with your fit because the less turns you have right now the better and we're just going to slide it in being careful not to come out of the cover and then all i'm doing is i'm pushing the cover on the fit holding the fit and the cover tight and then sliding down the cover over top of the fit when you're pressing this on and moving it around be sure you don't accidentally grab the core and yank this because then you could pull the core out of the fit and then you got to pull it all out and, and reattach it to your fit. And it's really easy until you get to the section that has the core coming out of it. So you see it moves real smooth. Now I'm getting close to where the core comes out of the cover. So now I'm going to have basically two cores going into one cover so it's going to be really tight. Another thing you can do here is kind of keep a, a, a slight bend in it because another thing that can happen is you can drive your fid into this core and now you have the two cores coming into each other and then coming out when you try to splice it and they, they won't pull against each other so then you have to pull those out, untangle them, and then redo it. So if you can, try to keep just a little slight bend and keep your fid needle at the top of that so it doesn't dive into the core. And like I said, this is the tighter part, so you will have to use a little bit of uh, grip strength to get this through. You can put the bottom of the fit down on something if that helps you. Pull it down. As you can see, I drove through the cover there. So we'll back up a little bit and just redo it. All right, so the goal is to get anywhere from five to ten inches past here and that's going to allow enough friction points here to keep the eye splice together uh, as well as give you enough space to put your whipping in because you will thread this you can either just do a stitch through and then back but I like to put a whipping on my eye splices I mean these things are holding my boat together so I'll take the extra five minutes and put in a, a yellow lock whipping so now that we got our fit coming out Keep driving until the fit is completely out and we get our core coming out there. And there's our core on our fit through a little bit so we don't have to worry about it sliding back into the cover. Now is the fun part. So we can go back up here where we taped off the cover and the core meeting and we are going to remove the tape now. So now the goal is to get all, at least this and all of this sucked down into here. And the way we do that is by milking the line. I have a slip knot in the bottom of the line, approximately 10 feet uh, past the bitter end that we've been working with. And that's just to kind of make sure that your whole core doesn't slip out of the cover somewhere along the way. So what I'll do is I'll start down there and I'll start sliding, holding it and then sliding my hand along the the cover and this pushes the cover all the way up so now you can see how fat the line is here because all that cover is bunched up there and then we'll hold and keep pulling and we'll see that this line slowly get sucked into the cover 
Now at the beginning, it's going to be pretty easy. You just pull on it because it's just pulling another cover in there, so now you have two covers. When you get to this point where your cover is in your core, now you basically have two cores and a cover going into what normally just holds one core, so it's going to start getting tighter on you. So you'll just have to do the same thing. Once you run all the way up to there, you'll milk the line again. Now you got a bunch of core or a cover up here. So I will wrap my hand so where I can actually pull the core inside while holding onto this. And then you'll see that come back in. Uh, one of the tips is once you start doing this, this section of the rope is going to get extremely tight. All the strands are going to be bound together because you're, you're pushing them all in one spot. So if you just take it and then work the line back and forth in a couple directions, that's going to loosen those up to make it slide a little bit easier for you. Milk the line again, wrap my hand, and then pull the core down. Now this is going to take a while and it is quite a bit of work. Um, I'm not sure the exact like Newton's re force required to pull this through here, because I'm sure it'd be different for your rope and all your friction points. But what I will say is that if an average man cannot pull the core through, if it gets bound up, then you might have a problem. What might have happened is that when you were feeding this core through here, you went inside of the other core and then came back out. Uh, if you want to check that to see if that's the problem, you should be able to move this both ways and if you can if you can slide this back and forth and you can still move this in even just a little bit even if it's only giving you that much you can do that a couple times that small little movement then you're fine but if you yank on this thing and you're putting everything you have into it and it's not budging then check the core and the way you would do that is on this end where the one core comes out you can kind of look in there and see if it's wrapped around because this one is coming out this way and if it's bound up in the core you'll have basically a thread coming across it that way. Not the entire thing but one of these little strands will be coming across there and that lets you know that it's bound up in the core. Another way that people will suck this down is that they will tie your bitter end off to a fixed object and then you just keep pulling the line like this away from that fixed object and it eventually come in. So if you want, you can try hooking it up to one of your winches or another fixed object on your boat while you're pulling this. All right, so another thing we can do is we can try to clean up some of this here. As you can see, I'm getting down to the last bit of pulling this side in. So now I'm gonna try to straighten up some of this. As you can tell, this eye splice here is much wider because there's a bunch of bound up cover here. So we're going to try to fix some of that. You can pull this down and that will cinch up some, some of this. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to clean it up. Alright, so now that that's basically all tied up in there, we're going to pull this back, all this slack back out, but we're going to pull it this way. So what you want to make sure when you're doing this, since this isn't spliced in completely yet, is that you don't just yank on the eye, because then you could yank it out this way, and now you just undid all of your work. So now you got to re-feed all that, you don't want to mess with that. So come around, and then make sure you're only pulling this leg you want to pull that, the core, up into there. You can kind of milk it around this way, get all of your extra cover over here. Again, pulling your core through. Pulling the core through. Now you can see that our eye is getting bigger and the rope is getting thinner. Because now it's getting back to normal. All right, 
so that looks pretty good there. So we still got a couple inches. The last couple inches, though, are the hardest part of this. So we'll go back to milking the line. Wrap our hand and work it to open it up. And pull. All right, so as you can see, I have all the white covered now. So all of the core is in there and it's blue and blue. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull it just a little bit more to make sure that I don't get any slippage and it doesn't come back out. All right, now let's take a look at our eye again. Uh, you can see it's just a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna try to pull some of this back through. I'll work this to loosen it up. Make sure we get all of our cover around here. And then I'll grab and pull some of this through. One more time. All right, now we're gonna work this. So now we're almost done. We just have this core tail sticking out here. We're gonna take our scissors and you can taper this if you want, but just cutting it will be fine. So I cut it across almost flush with the cover. Work it in a little bit. Move my line. Wrap my fingers and pull it in. All right, so now I'm all blue down there. So now my cover is over top of my entire eye splice. So right now, the only thing holding this eye splice in is the friction from all of the cover, the two cores inside of this cover right here for about this five or six inches, uh, which is fine as long as you don't put any real weight on this. At a minimum, you want to at least throw in a stitch from one end to the other end, the other end and back again to make sure that this doesn't pull out. Uh, like I said at the beginning, myself, I'm gonna go ahead and put a whip lock on it right here uh, to ensure that the eye never pulls out. Uh, it's up to you, depending on what you wanna do. As you can see right here, one I have done previously, I have a nice whip lock on my eye splice holding it in. That way I don't have to worry about this ever coming apart. Since I've already showed you the ice splice, I guess that finishes it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you gotten a little something out of it, and we'll see you next time. Now I'm ready to see, I'm ready.